Okay, so you're on a diet. And it's not because you're trying to lose weight. It's just diet is the word that we use for the food that we eat and the nutrition that comes to us. And you're trying to live a healthy lifestyle, and you calculate on this diet that you should be consuming this much protein, this many carbs, and this much fat each day. And here's the stuff that you typically eat every day. You eat a bowl of Honey Nut Cheerios, which gives you 3 grams of fat, 44 grams of carbs, and 4 grams of protein, each bowl. A box of Kraft Macaroni and Cheese, which has 11.6 grams of fat, 136.3 grams of carbs, and 29 grams of protein. And a serving of Costco Trail Mix, which is 3 tablespoons, 3 tablespoons is one serving, has 9 grams of fat, 14 grams of carbs, and 5 grams of protein. I'm going through this very, very fast, because right now the numbers don't matter that much. So just try and stay with me for a second here. And also, um, I actually pulled these numbers off, off of the nutrition labels of these foods. And the Kraft macaroni and cheese, you have to kind of estimate. So it depends on how much milk you use, what type of milk you use, what type of butter. And also, they're trying to disguise how unhealthy that food is. So they make things kind of tough to calculate. But stay with me. These are the three sources of food for your day. How many of each should you eat to achieve your diet goals? Meaning, what combination of bowls, boxes, and handfuls of trail mix should you eat to make this happen? And you don't want to go too far under this. You definitely don't want to go too far over this, and maybe not too far over this, depending on what type of fat it is. But how would you calculate the best way to arrange this diet? Well, you want a system of equations that has three equations and three variables. X stands for bowls of cereal. Y stands for boxes of mac and cheese. Z stands for servings of trail mix. And it ends up setting up like this. And I'm not going to solve this today, because the point of this isn't to solve this. The point of this is to show there are systems of equations that can get very complex, but still be very useful. And so before we try to solve these things with substitution, elimination, graphing, now we're going to work our way up, kind of use this chapter to work our way up to solve a problem like this using what's called matrices. So we're not going to solve that problem today. We'll solve it at the end of the chapter and kind of work our way towards it. A matrix, singular version, matrix plural, a matrix is an organized way to show data. In many cases, it's like a system of equations, only the variables have been taken out. We just deal with the numbers and not the variables, which kind of makes sense if you stop and think about it. There's a bunch of components to a matrix to, to discuss. There's rows, so like here's a row and here's a row. There's columns. And there's, this has one, two, three, four columns. Each matrix has its own dimension, meaning the size the matrix is. We'll talk about that more soon. And each matrix is made up of individual cells containing elements. So this matrix here has two rows and three columns. Its dimension is a two by three. This is a two by three matrix. This has four rows four columns. This is a 4 by 4 matrix. That's called a square matrix. It's square if the number of rows matches the number of columns. So this right now has three rows, two columns. This is a 3 by 2 matrix. And I left it blank um, to kind of show how to talk about cells next. So the matrix contains these dimensions, 2 by 3, 4 by 4, 3 by 2. But then each little piece inside the matrix is called a cell. So this first matrix here has six cells. And this one obviously has 16 cells. And the other one has six cells over here. So each individual piece of the matrix is called a cell. And the cell can hold an element. So like this is the element 2. The element 2 is inside the matrix. And this is the element 0. And the element 0 is inside the matrix. And the elements are the individual pieces and numbers inside of a matrix. So we can actually label these. I'm going to, um, I start writing a lot and things have to kind of get kind of frantic, so I'll just switch color for now. This cell right here, we would call A11. That means first row, first column. And this cell here would be A21, second row, first column. So that's not 21, that's 21. And this cell right here is A31, third row, first column. So this cell here would be second row, third column. We'd call that A sub 2, 3. Not 23, but 2, 3. So to take this just a little further, here's A 1, 1. Second row, first column. Third row, first column. 
uh, first row, second column, second row, second column, third row, second column. You can label all of these cells that way. Everything with matrices goes row, column. Remember that for this whole chapter. You first list things by row or do things by row, then you list or do them by column. So that's the basic makeup of a matrix. Adding, subtracting, and scaling matrices is where we'll finish off this lesson. Matrices can only be added or subtracted if they have the exact same dimension. So this right now is a 2 by 3 matrix, and this over here is a 2 by 3 matrix. It's two rows, three columns. Since they have the exact same dimension, we can add them. And then what you do is you just add or subtract the corresponding cells, meaning this is, right now I'm going to do just A plus B. Here's matrix A, here's matrix B. Well, for A plus B, I just take the top left and add it to top left. Uh, top middle, top middle, 1 plus 1 is 2. And then 3 minus 3 is 0. 9 minus 2 is 7. 1 plus 5 is 6. Negative 2 plus 8 is also 6. This is my new matrix, A plus B. I added A to B. And all you do is just add corresponding spots. So cell 1, 1 went to cell 1, 1. Top left, top left. This right here is called a scalar. It's scaling matrix A. Everything in matrix A is being multiplied by negative 10. So negative 10A, just I take all the numbers and multiply them by negative 10. So there's negative 50, negative 10, negative 30. And then uh, negative 90, negative 10, 20. There is just negative 10 times matrix A. Matrix A was scaled by negative 10. Finally, subtraction. Subtraction is where you're going to start making mistakes because you're not going to distribute negatives. First, I'll find 2A. 2A is going to be all of this times 2. So that's 10, 2, 6. 18, 2, negative 4. And I will subtract matrix B, 0, 1, negative 3, negative 2, 5, 8. But the subtraction, you have to distribute the negative. So I'm doing, I'll switch colors again, 10 minus 0, which is 10, 2 minus 1, which is 1, 6 minus negative 3. Well, 6 minus negative 3 is actually 6 plus 3, which is 9. That is the very, very common mistake people make here. They forget to subtract twice or to distribute the negative, make it a positive. If you wanted to, you can take this negative and distribute it to all these numbers. Go 0, negative 1, 3, 2, negative 5, negative 8, and then add. You can distribute the negative and add if you would rather. That might be safer, or you can just remember that do 18... I'm doing 18 minus negative 2, which is actually 18 plus 2 for 20. 2 minus 5 is negative 3. Negative 4 minus 8 is negative 12. That is 2A minus B. Remember, everything with matrices goes row, column. Row, column, row, column, row, column. Good. Next. These just can't add. This is a 2 by 2 matrix. This is a 2 by 1 matrix. There are two rows and one column. It's a 2 by 1 matrix. These are not the same. This can't be done. You cannot say the answer is zero, because that would mean like you could add them up and they added up to zero. It's just this can't be done. And that's kind of what this symbol means. It's technically the null set or nil, but for now we can just think of it as not possible or can't be done. Um, addition of matrices has the same properties that addition of real numbers has. A plus B is the same as B plus A. You can flip the order of a matrix. A plus B plus C is the same as A plus... B plus C, meaning you do the B plus C first on the right side. That's the associative property. And it distributes. You can distribute the 2 here to get this, or distribute the 2 here to get this. Um, with addition, the properties of a matrix addition are the same as real numbers. Now, we're going to um, find X, Y, and Z. And this is a problem I'd like you to pause first and try. So do that. Okay, good. You've done that. Now, let's, let's see what happens. I know that, like here, 3 minus 4 gets me negative 1. So that also means that 6 minus negative 1 
gets me x. So x clearly must be 7. So let's find another variable. Here I know that y minus negative 1 equals 10. Well, we can do some algebra here. Subtract a 1 from both sides. Y must be 9. And z. Negative 1 minus z equals 0. And don't be careful with these negatives. I'm going to add 1 to both sides, and I get negative z equals 1. Divide both sides by negative 1, and z equals negative 1. I'm going to check that real quick. So I do negative 1 minus negative 1. That should be 0. Yeah, it is. So z is negative 1, y is 9, x is 7. To recap, matrices are, matrices are arrays to hold and work with data. Array means a rectangular form to, it's like a table kind of. They have dimensions, which are row times column or row by column. I shouldn't say times. This is like by row by column. With cells that contain elements, adding and subtracting matrices requires they have the same dimension. In any other case, it cannot be done. And they are actually really, really useful and great. And you'll see that more and more. Thanks for watching. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. There can be questions about the video you saw here or anything else in math I'm happy to help with. Subscribe if you'd like to watch more videos um, or see other updates as they come. I'm going to try to run through all of Algebra 2 trig and then eventually hit more classes like Algebra 1 and Geometry and Pre-Calc and everything else. If you have questions about stuff covered that's not in this video, still let me know. I'm happy to help. And finally, if you're not one of my students taking the class, but you found the video and are watching it, or maybe you're a teacher and are watching it, you can buy the curriculum and buy the worksheets to go through it. Uh, that's found at the website listed down below also. So again, thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day.